I'd like to share some improvements I made in creating cam strategies for Guitar Buddy. I made a previous video on cam process for Guitar Buddy earlier, but that job just took quite some time. I believe it was two hours per side or so. And I was sure there had to be a quick way of doing things. So I set a goal of 30, 40 minutes per side. For this cam process, I'll use the guitar I designed in a previous design video. And if you want to know more how I created that, please have a look at that video. I chose this body because it has a curved shape to it, so I have to apply a shaping strategy as well. And to improve on my cam strategies, I started experimenting with bigger tools. In order to get rid of the extra roughing passes, I need it with my smaller tools. In this video, I will show you what I came up with, and I'll show you the different tools I'm using today, where I got them, how I use them, and I'll talk about how I build up my cam jobs, and in what order I use them on the machine. I'll also show you the actual machining and this end result. So let's get right to it and start off with the tools. I developed some new strategies on how to get the cam process done quicker, as well as having less chance on those red lines or warnings in the cam job. It comes down to this. I eat away a lot of material with the larger tools. Uh, for not final strategies like adaptive and contour. And I also use a stock to leave. Also, using bigger tools helps me in skipping extra roughing passes in the first place, and that alone is already a time saver. And then I use smaller tools for all the details, as well as tidying up the corners uh, with too much material that the bigger tools could not remove. And for round profiles, I'm using uh, a bigger round nose tool instead of small ball nose tools for smoother results. I'll show you the tools I'm using. To remove most of the material in one roughing pass, I'm using these Charles Flathead mills. I bought these online at Amazon in a set of four. It has its 30 mil to a 22, a 15 and a 10. Uh, I'll put the link down in the description. I mainly use this 22 Flathead mill um, because it saves me all the roughing passes which I had with a 6 mil tool. And these might not be the toughest I could find, but they certainly are affordable. I broke one the other day and this one got damaged uh, during the process so I ordered a new one and I also ordered an 8mm shaft version and I expect this one to be a bit more sturdier than the 6mm ones. The next tool for making the curved profiles I'm using the Dingbrain round nose tool. Um, they also come in a pack of four. Uh, it's smallest being 16, it comes with a 22, a 25 and a 32. Uh, I found that when using a relatively large round tool, you get a more precise curved body instead of using those small ball nose tools. Now I'm using this 16mm tool because it fits nicely in the slot this 22 flatted mill makes. Um, I could use a 22 uh, round nose tool, but then in the scallop strategy, it would probably collide with the stock and that is something I'm trying to avoid. The downside of having a curved body like I have in this example is having the more finished product means using smaller oversteps. Now I do not mind a little sanding, so I'm trying to keep the time down between 30 or 40 minutes by adjusting the size of the overstep. The last tools I'm using are these small 6mm flatten tools. Uh, these are two flutes. The one, this one is 25mm long and this one is 32 uh, I'm using the 32 for the bottom side because it needs to reach deep into the pockets for the electronics. Um, I'm using these tools only for the final shapes to remove material that the 22 flatted mill could not reach. Uh, for example, the material in the pockets for the pickups and so on. I made a black mark on the shaft of the tool to know how deep to clamp it into my router. The nut needs about 16 or 17 mil to hold on to and the rest of the tool I can then use to go deep into the material. Now this tool is 22 mil wide and with that it is wider than my clamping nut so I then can use the length of the clamping nut as well. Which gives me a total available depth of cut of about 45 mil and I only need about 26 or 27 or so but it's nice to know that I could do a full depth cut with it. So these are the four tools I'm using. I'm using this 22 flathead mill for adaptive strategies, eating away a lot of material. Uh, for adding details, I'm using this 6mm tool, uh, eating away all the material that the bigger tool could not eat away. And I'm using this curved round nose bit for creating all the curves on my guitar body. 
So that was it for tools. Let's continue to the CAM process. So the CAM process is uh, split up in three parts mainly. Uh, first the dowels, so to give you some reference when flipping the board. Uh, then I'll do the bottom process and then I've got the top process. All three setups uh, all have the same dimensions, uh, so it's a fixed box size. Uh, only the Z zeros are different. For the dial process, the Z zero is at the top of the drill process, and for the bottom and top process, essentially the Z zero is at the same position. Uh, it only changes when you flip the board, and then you have to set the Z zero at the bottom of your uh, spoil board or on top of your stock. The dowel process is pretty straightforward. It's a reasonably simple routine. Uh, they only have to be made for uh, small holes with my six millimeter bit. I've drawn uh, four circles, extruded them, and then I made a drill process and I made sure that I'm 15 millimeters down or so into my spoil board. I just have to make sure that my Z0 is at the top of the drill process and that the holes are symmetrical and as I'm flipping my stock around to a Y axis, uh, I just have to make sure it's symmetric uh, that way. There are many ways to do this. This is just one example. So the bottom process and the top process uh, mainly consists out of three uh, parts. There's a rough part where I want to eat away as much as possible uh, and I'm rough shaping the guitar in the stock. Uh, there's a shaping part uh, where I'm adding details to the smooth shape of the guitar. And then there's the details uh, where I'm finishing up all the holes for the pickups and so on. For the rough part, I'm using a contour strategy, but unfortunately, uh, Fusion did not allow me to select the whole contour at once, so I had to split up this process. Um, the first part eats away material that outlines the body of the guitar, and since the selected contour is not a loop, I have to adjust the extension at the beginning and at the end of the contour. Otherwise, I would also remove material from the neck joint. Uh, this part eats away material just over half of the depth of the guitar. Um, the tool is being lowered every pass about three millimeters just to be on the safe side. Um, the neck joint is also being done with a contour process. This is actually the second half of the contour process. Uh, here I also need to take into account the extension at the beginning and at the end of the contour just to make sure I'm not damaging the shaped body uh, from the previous process. So that is also the reason why I adjusted this value. The bottom of this process is 2 mm over the depth of the neck joint just to make sure the finishing is as sharp as can be to make a smooth transition to the neck. Uh, the multiple steps here are at 4 mm, there's no specific reason for this difference. Uh, the, this process does include a finishing pass to get the neck joint dimensions as precise as can be to get this smooth connection to the neck. And to give you an overview on how this looks, I'll show you the simulation. You can see there's a slight difference between the neck joint and the shape of the body, and that is on purpose. The next strategy is the adaptive strategy, and this is quite aggressive as well. This process eats away everything that is not needed on the stock, but it still leaves half a millimeter for the finishing strategies. This strategy also creates the rough shapes of the tremolo and the electronic pockets and these need to be finished later because of the big radius of this 22mm tool. Looking at the details, it runs at 3000 mils per minute and I selected two chains, the body and the neck joints, they will be cleared as well. And the stock to leave is set at half a millimeter to prepare for the finishing strategies. And the maximum roughing step down is set at seven millimeters, meaning it will lower every pass in the pockets by at most seven millimeters. This worked out for me fine. Um, uh, I don't know if it can be set higher, but this worked out for me uh, pretty good. And looking at the simulation, you can clearly see that all the steps this uh, adaptive strategy created. Um, that needs to be cleared up by the finishing strategies like Scallop and my 6mm tool. We'll get to that later. 
And now it's time to create a smooth finish to the bottom side of the guitar. I'd normally use a parallel process for this, but I found the scallop process was much quicker. Although this depends on the amount of oversteps and of course how big the area is that must be treated. As you can see, the two path is pretty dense. That indicates that I probably will get a nice result. Since I'm using this 16mm uh, round nose tool, the result should be okay. Looking at the details in the edit, it now runs at 3500 but could easily be bumped up to 4500. The tool will not bite deep into the stock since the adaptive process earlier did eat away most of the material and left a half a millimeter behind. I selected four chains so the whole backside would be part of the process and I made sure the tool was outside the boundary and this way also the sides of the stock material will be smoothed out. Also I indicated what parts to avoid and that saves me a lot of time as well but more important all straight walls will not be touched by the round nose tool. The lowest point in the process is just beneath the curve of the middle piece of the body. The step over between each pass is now set to 2mm, I had it on 3 but then I found the finish to be too rough and I have to send that down later on. Uh, I think 2mm overstep gives me a good result uh, with a little sanding afterwards. Looking at the simulation you can clearly see the light oversteps of 2mm uh, which I need to send down later. Um, I could use smaller oversteps but that would create more machining time. Uh, and I still want to reach my target like 30 40 minutes. Uh, but anyway, if you would make a fender body, you would skip this step anyway, and then you are still within the target of 30 40 minutes. So, finally, the details um, this is done with a 6 mil tool and only addresses the leftover bits uh, that the previous operations could not do. I'm not going to address all the strategies, but the ones I think that uh, are most interesting to you. Uh, you might notice there are quite a few operations and I found that splitting up process in multiple operations instead of creating one big operation makes it easier for me to reach my goals. It could well be that there are combinations possible, but for now this works for me. The first pocket and drill operations are making holes for the screws that go into the neck joint and making holes for the dowel so I can flip the stock for doing the top side later. And then there's a pencil operation smoothing out an edge within the tremolo hole so the tremolo has room to move. Now a more interesting bit, um, the pocket operation for the tremolo springs. Since the adaptive operations left some material behind, it's now time to be more precise to get this pocket to its correct size. The 22 mil tool is not able to make a corner of 3 mm, so I have to correct it now with the smaller 6 mm tool. Looking at the details, I select the inner top ring of this pocket, so all sides are being touched by the tool, and on the next page, you can see I select the bottom of the pocket as the bottom face. And then I'm using two finishing passes at a thousand mil per minute. This process is slower to exclude the effect of deflection of the tool in order to get the precise dimension of the pocket. And once that is done, it's time to move on to the electronic pocket. Here I'm using a contour strategy and again for uh, shaping up the corners and to get rid of the material the 22mm tool uh, could not remove. Um, as a contour I selected this chain and also indicated what to avoid touching, which in this case are the insides of the holes uh, for the pots of the electronics. The tool goes down with a ramp of 3 degrees, basically it's going down in circles around the edge of the pocket, and meanwhile eating away all the excess material and cleaning up the corners. Then there's one thing left to do and that is to clean up all the edges where the covers of the holes sit in. And that is a quite simple job that I do with a pencil strategy. Uh, looking at the details, I selected two chains, had to put the tool outside the boundary of the tool, and I also had to indicate what to avoid in this strategy for a clean finish. And basically that's all to it. And now the bottom side is done, I'll show you the simulation. One thing to notice is that there are no holding tabs made on this side. That is something that I will do when I'm machining the top side. Reason for that is that I needed room for the curvature in the middle of the guitar body.
Now the cam process of the top side is not much different of the bottom side. I still have three main processes, the rough process with the 22 flat end mill, the details I do with the 6mm tool and the scallop is done with the round nose tool, 16mm. The main difference is that in the first contour process I also make tabs and these tabs hold the body in place. So to hold the body in place they must be of reasonable size and they are 22 millimeters wide and 8 millimeters tall. And when the whole top side is done I'm left with a guitar body that is held into place by these tabs as you can see in the simulation. The simulation shows you the process for the bottom side as well as the top side. Later I will cut the body out of the stock material and give it a light sanding. Another feature of Fusion that I discovered lately is split by tool. This is a real nice feature that you'll find when generating the final files for your machine. You can find the feature if you go to post process, open up the properties and select split by tool. With this feature, the files are split by tool. In my case, I get the main file, which contains references to the specific files, and next to that, it generates different files per tool. So let's take the top side as an example. First, there are three processes with the 22 mm tool, then a few with the 6 mm tool, and as a final, I got the round nose tool. So the output of the post process gives me this. I got one main file and three files with the given name and their order of execution and tool number. I think it's a cool feature because I do not have to come up with clear names for each cam job. I just have to drag and drop them into my machine and run the job. So this is the actual machining. I'm uh, first start off with the uh, dowel holes in the spoiler board. I'm changing the tool here. I'm careful not to put it in too far uh, at the black mark uh, on the shaft of the tool. Uh, I'm setting X and Y zero here. And then Z zero is at the bottom of the spoil board because I start with uh, the bottom side of the guitar. So now I start with the first half of the contour process. Because this is a big tool, it makes a lot of mess in my machine. You might have noticed that I'm using plywood here and that is just basically because this is a test piece. For the second half of the contour process there is a quick and dirty um, pass and also the slow pass because that is the finishing pass that you see. Now I'm creating the pocket for the electronics and I'm taking away a lot of extra material. Um, prior to the scallop process. As you can see the tool is pretty deep into the stock. Um, I'm creating the curves in the middle section of the guitar here as well as the pocket for the tremolo springs. And now this process is done, um, it's time to uh, start the vacuum cleaner because I uh, first have to clean up the mess that I made and uh, then it's time to change the tool and then it's time to change the tool to the round nose bit, uh, it's a 60mm tool and Z0 is still at the spoil board. And this process that I'm about to start is about 15 minutes. Uh, that, that time depends on how big the area is uh, you'd like to scallop, uh, but also the step over. So if you are about to make this area um, smaller than what I have at this very moment, then you'll probably win some minutes, like 10 minutes or so. And if you are about to skip this whole process, you're winning 50 minutes. As you can see there's coming off little material from the stock because most of the material that I took off uh, I did with the adaptive uh, strategy. So again some cleaning and changing the tool to the 6mm tool 
Uh, this is 32 millimeter in length uh, because I need to reach deep down into the electronics pocket. And Z0 is still at the top of the spoiler board. Um, I'm creating the holes here for the neck joints, um, finishing off the tremolo springs, all uh, electronic pockets, and um, the part where the covers sit in. So that was the bottom side of the guitar. Now I'm cleaning it, I'm unscrewing the stock material, I'm putting in dowels, flipping the board, and screwing it down into the spoiler board again. I'm changing the tool. Uh, to a flat bit 22 millimeter to start all over again setting Z0 on top of the stock this time and there's the first half of the contour again I really need to be careful not to reset the X and Y positions um, because they stay at the same position but only to reset the Z0 position um, if you are uh, nulling the Z0 so this is the second half of the 2D contour. And now I'm making the rough shapes for the uh, pickups and taking away the rest of the material that I don't need and that would otherwise get in the way with, for the scallop process. Right, so cleaning up the machine. And changing the tool to a six millimeter bit this time. Um, I'll do the scallop um, and in the end. Um, but first I'd like to add some details. So I'm creating the neck joint here and the pickup pockets. And also the tremolo hole from the top side down. Right, so again, some cleaning. And now for the last process, I set up my 60 millimeter round nose tool, setting Z0 at the top of the stock. And be careful not to set C0 uh, measured from the guitar body because that is a bit lower than the top of the stock. There's not much material coming up. Uh, it's about half a millimeter per pass. The total machining time for the bottom process is 40 minutes. And for the top process, it was about 30 minutes. Uh, so I'd say I've reached my goal. Um, if you would not need the scallop process, it would gain you 15 minutes per side. At the very end of this process, I have a guitar body which is uh, uh, holding on to the stock material with a few taps on the side. And I'll show you uh, in a few minutes how I release it and how I do a little sanding and then you have the end result. Here I am releasing the body from the stock material, cutting it loose with an oscillating saw. And then I do a bit of sanding starting with 60 grit and ending with 240 or so. I'm using a pillow, which seemed to appear like magic in the time lapse, so I can apply some force to the body without it walking away from me too quickly. Now this is the end result. I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, it's nice and smooth and it's been done within a set time frame of 30-40 minutes per side. Um, for comparison, I got another body here, which has not been sanded down yet, uh, but it's, got a, it's been done with a step over of 3 millimeters. Uh, I think the difference is huge between the two. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions or tips to improve on something, I'll be glad to hear it. I want to thank you for watching.